In this video, we take a look at interior lighting in Redshift. Hey folks, welcome to MoGraph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to Redshift for 3ds Max. It's a massive 13 hours course in which we explore all the aspects of Redshift for Max thoroughly. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the description. Also, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. You can use a combination of a white dome light and a directional light for interior lighting in Redshift for Max. I've applied this mid-gray diffuse material to all the objects in the scene. Let's start by adding a simple dome light and start IPR. Obviously the scene is too dark and your first reaction might be to increase the intensity of the dome light, but when working with interior lighting in Redshift I personally tend to keep the dome light at its default intensity and exposure or adjust it by a stop or two, but in this case if we wanted to solely increase the exposure value of the dome light to compensate for our dark render we would need to increase it by 6 or 7 stops which makes me uncomfortable a bit. And that simply means the better way is to make sure our camera is properly exposed. On the other hand, Redshift Portal Light, which we'll talk about it in a moment, is a bit finicky and in my own experience, the best way is just to keep the intensity of the dome light at 1 if the lighting will involve portal light at some point, and instead adjust the camera's exposure. And that's what you would do in a real-world scenario. If you were taking a photo of an interior, you definitely make sure your lens is better exposed compared to an exterior shot. So that's why I think adjusting the exposure of the camera would be a better strategy, so let's open up our render view display settings. Enable photographic exposure. And let's decrease the shutter time ratio to 4, so the lens will be exposed longer and therefore we will get a brighter render. This gives us a nice overall soft lighting to work with and if you check the alpha channel, it won't affect the alpha so you can take your render to Photoshop, After Effects, Fusion or any other post-processing app and simply place your desired background picture behind the windows. Now it's a good time to talk about portal light and what it does. If I just start a final render in the render view, By default we get a noisy render which is not like Redshift, in newer versions of Redshift you normally start a render and expect a fairly clean render, but this is the opposite. Let's take a snapshot of this render. The reason for that is that huge spherical dome light encompassing the entire scene and Redshift tries to compute the sampling for that whole sphere around the scene, and this small portion of the dome light that we see through the windows where the light rays enter the room would get a tiny percentage of that sampling for the entire dome light. So we get a noisy render. Using a portal light we can guide the sampling process for the dome light and tell Redshift this is where we want to focus your calculation and sampling on. And to do that you put a portal light or portal lights behind your window or windows and they tell the dome light to focus its sampling through them and into the interior scene. Render engines are starting to become more intelligent and some of them have already ditched portal lights and do that on their own. You just need your dome light and the render engine will take care of the rest. Hopefully Redshift follows suit soon. Let me stop IPR. Now add a portal light. and place it right behind the windows covering them completely. To save some time I have this dummy object to quickly place the portal light, so let's align it. Make sure the light orientation is correct using this arrow which indicates the orientation of the portal light. Set its size to 765 on X and 181 on Y. Now that we have our portal light properly in place, we can start another final render and see if it has improved our render or not.
the render is finished and we can clearly notice the render is cleaner and if we take another snapshot and compare it to our previous render. You see with the same render time we have a much cleaner render, so the same render time but cleaner results thanks to portal light. Now we can add a directional light to represent our sun, so let's add one to the scene. We can rotate the directional light and decide on how we'd like the light to shine through. In this case, let me set its orientation to negative 55 degrees on X, 57 degrees on Y, and negative 106 degrees on Z. And also rename the light to stay organized. The sunlight is too bright, so let's decrease its intensity to 1 or 2. To get a bit more realistic shadows, set the shadow softness to 0 0.5. And this will give us softer shadows. And finally, to get a tad warmer colors from the sun, we can change the color mode to temperature and use something warm like 4500 Kelvin. You can use warmer colors or cooler tones depending on your scene and taste. Now let's take a quick final render to see where we are. The render is done. Redshift might not have all the features that some other render engines have but it's freaking fast. This render took like 20 seconds. While we are here, let's get rid of this high frequency noise. So let's open up the render settings. Change the quality to high. Enable denoising and let's use Altus again as we want to denoise a final render. And let's start a final render right in the render view. This render took around 40 seconds which is really fast for an interior render and now we get this clean and ready to go render. It might be a bit too flat but you can make it a bit more contrasty right here in the render view. Let's open up our display settings again and go to the color control section. And use this curve to adjust the values, make the dark values a bit darker. And this is objectively a better looking image. And now you can add a nice background image and post instead of this white background if you wish so as the dome light won't add to the alpha. Great. When you save your render, if you want to save these photographic exposure and color correction adjustments with your render and don't plan on any color correction in post, you can have them turned on. Otherwise disable them before starting the final render and after the render is finished and saved to your color correction in post. And that might be better as you would keep the linearity of the render intact. Meaning if you are planning to have a back to beauty composite using AOVs you still get the exact image in post after adding different AOVs together. But if you have these color corrections on here, and then take a final render and try to have a beauty composite using AOVs in post, it might not exactly match with the render that you see in the render view. We talk about this stuff in depth in the rendering section of the course, but just a heads up here. While we are here let's quickly try other approaches to interior lighting in Redshift. Before that let's change the denoising engine to optics for a real-time denoising experience. First, let's try a simple sun and sky rig. Before that we can turn off our dome and directional light. We still need to keep the portal light enabled for the same reasons previously mentioned. So add a sun light. Add the physical sky to it. Start IPR. You just need to rotate the sun and make sure the light can shine through.
Maybe set the shutter time ratio to something like 2 or 3 for a longer exposure. When using sun and sky you have a bit more creative control, you can change the sky model. Maybe offset the horizon height so the line wouldn't be visible through the window. You can change the red-blue shift or saturation. Or increase the sun disk scale for softer shadows. And you can change the position of the sun in the sky to get different looks like afternoon or sunset, which would be harder to do with only a dome light and a directional light. You can obviously still use HDR images with dome lights. Let's disable our sun and sky rig and clear the environment. Add a new dome light. Rename it so we can differentiate it later on. Load this the sky is on fire HDR image. As we are in ACES change the color space to linear sRGB. Maybe we can rotate it for 50 degrees. and change the shutter time for a better exposure. And this gives us this moody render. We still can incorporate a directional light with this setup to simulate sun. You can try that on your own, or we can try an HDRI that has a nice sun. Let's try this Fright Station HDR image to get a different look. Set its rotation to zero so the sun can shine through. We can work on our photographic exposure as well to get a well-exposed render, maybe shutter time of around 4 or 5. And this results in a completely different look, so you can try different HDR images and each time get a completely new feel and look. Let's stop IPR and go for one more final render right in the render view. Cool, so in this lesson we learned about interior lighting and redshift for Max. See you in the next video. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com or our Gumroad page at gumroad.com slash mographplus and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift, Octane, and so on. See you in the next video.